Hi guys, so you've probably been watching some of the other videos and I've kind of um, been utilising the pavilion a bit, or gazebo, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, because the weather's been horrendous. Um, the last couple of months it's been chucking down with rain so much. Um, I don't like the, the talking about a year being horrendous or anything like that, but I've done a lot of positive things this year and I just wanted to wish everyone a really happy new year and I hope you've had a good year um and you've got some plans for next year and you know if you are a photographer a videographer an artist or anything like that and you really enjoy what you do uh, i think you know it's important that we carry on doing stuff like that because uh last year obviously a lot of people will know i was really ill and i've been working pretty hard to sort myself out and you know just working hard on the exercise eating well sleeping better um, just doing more cool things. And a few little hiccups, like the car's being a complete and utter dick at the minute. Um, but that's off to the garage on the 2nd of January, just, you know, beginning of the year, you know. But anyway, um, so I just wanted to talk about a couple of things, you know, through this, that we've, that we, sh I think personally that we should be doing um, and realising certain things. It doesn't matter how old we are, and I kind of wish at the age of 20, that I thought about my life a bit more seriously than we do. I mean, we all think we're invincible at that age, um, and I can't believe I'm saying it because I'm 46. So your health is worth more than anything else, and, you know, until you get older, you don't realise that at all. You literally, like I say, you're, you're pretty much invincible when you're younger. Um, you might break the odd bone or have accidents and stuff like that, but you seem to bounce back, or most people do bounce back and, you know, carry on living. Uh, I did some crazy things back in when I was younger and survived somehow. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was one thing. Is And that's what I've realised this year is sort my health out and just do things that are less stressful um, and sleep better, eat better. Um, you know, one, to reduce my blood pressure, but just, just be a better person, you know. Um, spend time with decent people. And, you know, there's a lot of decent people out there still, but obviously a lot of idiots, but um, just pick and choose the bright people that you want to spend time with. And, you know, lucky I've got some very good friends and good family. And, you know, it's helped me through this, this year, 2023. So um, that was one thing. Um, the other thing, which would be really nice if the weather would stop being horrible, is get out and take more photos. It doesn't matter what it is of, it could be a flower, could be a photo shoot with a model, could be pets, wildlife, the stars, um, seascape, landscapes, you know, the, the list goes on. We can photograph every single thing on this planet um, and, and beyond uh, as such as well. So I think getting out and doing more is one, it's good for your mental health um, hugely. And it really does make you focus on being creative and stuff like that. So it's, it's a fantastic tool for people who are suffering um, with depression and anxiety and stuff like that. It's helped me a little bit anyway, uh, just being able to get out through the summer time and everything, I was out shooting every day, but I mean, you know the amount of videos I was putting up. Uh, just enjoy yourself and just love doing it because, you know, the other day, I, was, I mean, there'll be another video coming very soon as well. I was out with Paul and Andy. Uh, Paul's a friend of mine, photographer. We went for a good old walk through the woods and everything. Uh, the weather was not great, but we still had a really nice time. We were chatting away, and it was just really pleasant, you know. So obviously everyone's got different interests in life uh, and we all do different things. But when you have the same type of person and they get together and you have interesting chats and, you know, it's interesting to talk about everyone's interests and things like that, it's, it's just good for you. Um, and it just makes you happy. And I think, you know, health and happiness are one of the most important things. Uh, edit less and shoot more. Like I was saying, just try and get out and shoot more. Editing, I think, and if you look at my work, most of it is a less than 30 seconds per image process. I um, jump in, I adjust a couple of levels maybe, uh, open and save. Obviously, if I'm doing a portrait shoot and stuff like that, I might do a little bit of editing here or there um, and uh, adjust a few things, maybe remove a background or something like that or just sort the background out, whatever I'm doing. Uh, they may take a little bit longer, but very rarely do I spend more than 30 seconds per image on a uh, photo. So the less time you can spend in front of the in front of the computer, sorry, allows you to be out with the camera uh, doing more. So that was that was just a point. 
as well. Um, this one's a little bit controversial. Um, a new camera doesn't make you a better photographer. It does, but at the same time it doesn't. Um, and I know this because I bought the A1 when it came, you know, relatively, um, well, last year, I suppose, was it last year? Um, beginning of last year. Um, so I've had it for almost two years, I suppose. And, you know, having one of the best cameras ever made as such out there, uh, it did transform my photography, but at the same time, you need the knowledge on how to get the most out of a particular camera. So it did help that, obviously, I've got years of experience on using one Sony kit, so I know what the menu system's like, and I know how they handle, and I know kind of what their um, flaws are compared to, say, uh, Nikon and Canon. Wouldn't have a clue with Nikon and Canon particularly. Uh, you know, if someone gave me one to try, uh, and play with it would take me quite a long time to get used to it where a sony camera i would turn it on set it up and use it without even thinking so if you can get the most out of the camera you own already um before upgrading i think it's well worthwhile so you get the best the best of the best out of it um and then think about upgrading but that's obviously down to you 100 percent. but um just because it's got a new system in there that maybe um you know, new autofocus system or something has made it slightly better. Is it really worth the upgrade? Are you going to get better shots from it? Probably, but at the same time, are you going to get the most out of it if you upgraded now? That's what I was thinking. Uh, something like the like the A6700. The only reason I actually bought that was because I had the A7R3 as a backup camera. And the only reason I actually bought it was because it does a couple of things that the A1 doesn't. One, it's a, it's a handy little crop crop sensor camera and two um it had the flippy screen and stuff like that so there was a couple of things on there that were beneficial to me where the a7r3 was just sat in the bag dead money not being used at all and that's kind of a different situation but you know uh if you are shooting as a as a hobby hobbyist or enthusiast um maybe just i'm trying to save you money basically so um i'll say save you money it's made me realise in the last year, talking about health, back to the health part, uh, health is much more valuable than money. And obviously where I was head chef for many years as well, I was earning decent money and, you know, I could buy, I could buy stuff as I wanted and it didn't really matter. Uh, you know, so now where I'm not earning very much money uh, compared to what it was then, because I've been spending a lot more spare time doing exercising out with the camera uh, and basically just trying to focus on myself rather than worrying about work and things like that. So basically I took a lot of time out, like 10 months or so. Uh, obviously I've had to sort of streamline my life a little bit. So, you know, to carry on living without spending too much money, you kind of have to adjust your lifestyle. So did that, that was great, but obviously it did make me think about uh, buying equipment. Oh, I'd love to have that new lens. And then I'm thinking, I can't, I can but I can't at the same time. So it made me think about spending money and I'd worked out, I think I've spent over 80 grand over the last 10 years or so on stuff. Uh, probably didn't need it, <laughs> some of it, because some of it got sold. Some of it was amazing to try out and, and use and then obviously sell it on and stuff like that. But I did waste quite a bit and I think a lot of us have done that over the years. So yeah, it's, um, yeah. It's the new toy syndrome, I think. I don't know if you call it that, but anyway. Um, and then on to something relatively new, even though it's been around for quite a few years, but not really mainstream, um, was the AI editing. Um, I think we should use it sparingly. I think it's fantastic because now, I, if I need to do something in Photoshop and I just want to enhance an image a little bit, I can highlight an area, I can type in, I don't know, um, add a Christmas tree, add a cat or, or whatever, and it will appear in that shot and it blends it nicely and, and it does look quite good. Um, sometimes it's a bit interesting what it does, but at the same time, it saves me a lot of time in the editing process and two, um, it is quite a handy tool. Um, but what it is doing is it's got into social media now and it, it's basically everyone's using it and it's OTT. And basically you look at these images and they just look generated. They don't look realistic. And one of my big things is keeping it real. Um, I really don't want, I, editing wise, I haven't got a problem with the people editing at all. We've done it for over a hundred years on photography, in photography. Um, and if we do it well, 
and it's enhancing the image, but the original image is obviously there. Um, I don't think it's really an issue, but it's when you're sort of creating an image from nothing um, that you haven't you haven't had you know any sort of in, real input into. I think that's one of the biggest um, the problems, and also social media is just full of it. People are obsessed by it already. You know, oh AI's done this, AI's done that. I'm like, I don't care. I just want to you know do it do it for real. Um, and that's where I get on to um, the fakery side of it. I don't really like the fakery too much. Uh, and also the experience side of it, and I have talked about this before. Uh, if you're doing a photo shoot, you know, we could go to a cool location somewhere and you know, we have to be really lucky on the weather. A bit like the wedding dress shoot in the sea. If you've seen that video, if not, I'll put a link in the thing um, with Kira. That was so much fun. And you know, I, mean, I wasn't the one getting soaking wet, but, um, she was loving it. I was flying the drone around with her walking on the beach with a wedding dress, then she just walks into the sea, and this wind's getting more crazy. Jesus. Um, and she was loving it. So it's sometimes more important about having the experience as well as a memory than just capturing it in, on film as such, you know, or, or in a digital format. Uh, but there's also the fact that we could have shot a lot of it in studio and then using other images and stuff like that created an edit that kind of made it look like um she was actually in the sea or whatever uh and never actually been on the beach and i think it's more important really to go and have that experience one you're going to get better shots and two um you know if you can really get into that sort of um focus point of you know what you're going to create together and this that, and the other i mean it doesn't have to be a female model it could be a male model it could be a motorcycle doing something cool um there's lots and lots of things that we can do in the real world and i think that's one of the most important things that i really want to concentrate on um 2024 as such is keeping it real and you know it takes me back to the film days when i had this um pentax me super um and I look back at my early early images, early modelling images that I did with my friend Rosie, and um, there was a girl called Hannah as well that I, I shot in, we were just black and white photos on film, and they are still some of my favourite photos I've ever taken in the last 30 years of taking photos. And it's, it just makes you realise, you know, even though film is still awesome, it's expensive to do, but, uh, and obviously, Digital is pretty much instant. I can obviously film and you know process it and edit it and everything and get it out and in use within an hour kind of thing if you really want to. But the photo is the same. You, you know, with the film side of things, it's nice to have. It's actually a nice format. And as much as I'd love to do more of it, it is too expensive. Uh, unless you've already got all the kit and the light, the dark room and everything like that, which a friend of mine has got, uh, it does make it you know plausible as such uh but the digital at the same time now is so good even from the cheap entry level canon mirrorless up to the high-end canon sony nikon whatever um area you've got so much equipment available and also second hand i rarely buy brand new lenses anymore i'd go to a company called wex photo video uh, i've used them for years uh, you've got park cameras as well but wex are fantastic they actually give you a 12 month warranty on all of their secondhand used kit. It's basically new. <laughs> so if it goes wrong, they'll fix it or it'll be repaired or replaced, they'll give you something else. Um, so really, really good. And I think that's fantastic. I've, I've been watching um, some of the videos over in America with some of the YouTubers and you know they're talking about some of the um, stores over there that do um, secondhand stuff. And they're putting like a six month warranty uh, on the kit, which um, M MBD do, don't they? Um, they six months. I think uh, Park Cameras do uh, six months over here as well, which is fine. But if you can get a year, you know, uh, I generally don't sell my kit privately anymore. I always just go to the shops, try and get the best um, uh, uh, quotes from Wex or Park Cameras, <coughs> or MPD. They, um, you got to look at it as. Am I going to sell it easily without any drama? Because I've done it before. I've sent, sold a lens on eBay and they've gone, it's faulty. Bloody isn't, because I've been using it. It was totally fine. And I know what you're trying to do. They're trying to scam you out of um, sending back a dud one that they've got. And they're thinking things. So, you know, I always take pictures of the serial numbers and all that sort of stuff. 
and you know you can end up out of pocket because the seller the, the um, purchaser is always in the bloody right so you know that's why I've stopped using eBay and stuff like that for selling stuff because you may as well just trade it in or they will buy it off you um, obviously for an, a pretty good rate but you could get more privately but is it worth the hassle sometimes no so there's things like that you, you know I think it's it's taken into um, uh, account of you know things like that you just gotta be a bit careful uh, into 2024, am I going to buy any more kit? Probably, but I don't know what. There's nothing out at the moment that I really, really love. Um, I had thought about a, I think it's a 24 to 250? No, 240. 24 to 240, 10 times lens um, to stick on the A6700. But then I thought, well, I've still got the RX10. So is there much point? Um, when I've got this 200 or 600, so if I chuck it all that on, you know, I've, it's it's buying stuff that you don't really need again. It's just, you know, that's where you suddenly realise how good the RX10 Mark IV is, is the fact that you've got that 24 to 600, uh, you know, equivalent uh, use, usability for a small, in theory, a small camera. That, uh, you know, if you had that size or that much zoom and everything on the a6700 the camera's still going to be massive so it's a, it's a bit like mm, it's a trade-off isn't it um so yeah i've kind of like ditched all those ideas of different lenses um and i've actually got a small range of lenses now that i, I kind of use and uh, it it has made woken me up a little bit i've got the my sort of dream lenses i always wanted which was um the 35 mil f1.2 from sigma absolutely love that lens and people don't get it they, some people have been slagging it off saying oh well you don't need that um when you use it you suddenly realize how good it is um you know i, I bought it used for 899 uh instead of the 1500 quid new it's in mint condition it's absolutely lovely uh really love that lens absolutely brilliant for a portraiture dance stuff like that and you can shoot wide open on the a1 for example and because you've got such a um, range of shutter speeds now you can use the f1.2 in a sunny day with no filters nothing so it's, that's really helpful the 135g master absolutely love that lens uh, it's mega sharp great for products uh, and in the studio because the studio is nice and long uh, i can actually stand back and shoot full full size uh, images in, in the studio with no drama whatsoever so that's really cool i've got the sigma 14 to 24 f2.8 Again, bought it used uh, for about 600 quid, I think. Something like that. Uh, absolutely mint. And it's incredible. Absolutely love it. Um, the 200 to 600. Uh, again, awesome lens. Now I've got the one that works properly. We still don't know if it was the A7R4 that was being an idiot or if it was the lens I had. <sighs> I just gave up with it. And there's people still talking about it now, even on the A7R5. So it's, there's still issues with that sensor. I don't know if it's too many megapixels for that lens and it just doesn't can't deal with it I, I have no idea but that's another another discussion down the line isn't it um what else do i own uh 35 oh the 85 mil f uh, f1.8 just the sony bog standard thing that lens feels very cheap compared to the other lenses i've got and it's but it's very light it's pretty sharp um sharp enough anyway for general general use um, but it just gives you a little bit of a wider view than the 135. And I think I bought that used uh, for 300 quid, I think, or 350 in, in mint condition, boxed. And yeah, so pretty much all of my lenses, other than the one, uh, the 200, 600 and the 135, are all from used things. And they all had the one year uh, warranty on them. So uh, yeah, can't really moan at all, really. Uh, still love the A1. Uh, we may get a firmware update, I don't know. Um, really not worried, it, it works brilliantly. Um, if they can improve on it, of course, it's, I'm not gonna moan, but end of the day, it's a workhorse, it's brilliant. Um, A6700, still really liking that, and it's really quite usable in, in a lot of situations for me. Uh, fabulous for um, enthusiast camera uh, photographers out there as well, who don't want necessarily to go full frame. Uh, and it's, the image quality is fantastic. Obviously, RX10 Mark IV, been around six and a bit years now, coming up to its seventh year uh, this October. Uh, are we ever going to see a RX10 Mark V or something new, maybe? Uh, we don't know. 
Sony are highly secretive. Lots of people out there going, no, they're never going to make one, blah, blah, blah. But I think where they've been concentrating on the APS-C market and the full frame stuff to try and really bring out all of the up-to-date tech, um, they're not going to release anything that could basically be a, a camera killer because it could be, you know, the technology that we have now could make an RX10 Mark V be an absolute and utter beast of a camera like the RX10 Mark IV was when that first came out. Um, I mean, that was basically a mini A9, uh, you know, in reality to what it could do, the, the spec and, you know, how what it, what it was as a package. But, um, you know, they could release something that was absolutely stupid if they want to. And it, it, technology is there. Um, but I think it could hurt the market for themselves if they released one. So that's probably why they um, have stood back a bit. But a lot of people are saying it's not needed because of smartphones. Smartphones and real cameras there is, is huge. The, I know mobile phone cameras are fantastic and they do a very good job at what they do. But 24 to 600 mil proper lens with decent ergonomics and a viewfinder and stuff like that makes it a shitload easier for you to photograph a bird in flight or up or through it, you know, up in a tree or or whatever, um, compared to a mobile phone. You know, these things are shit. <laughs> you know, could you imagine trying to do a photo shoot, a proper photo shoot with one of these in reality, in as, as a pro? I mean, yeah, it would give you some okay fo photos, but it's also using. AI technology to give you fake images and that's what we don't want you know um, so it's just a case of just let's just do it bloody hell it's getting worse outside um, yeah so anyway that's me blabbering on that's the kind of thing that I've realised over this year that is Christ um, that we should just love it do it and because we love it is it just makes us happy you know and for me that's what it does I get up every morning thinking Right, we were going to shoot today, um, but unfortunately, the enthusiasm in the last couple of months. Christ, um, the whole building is shaking. Uh, the last couple of months, we've had so much rain. Even though I have been out in the rain and, and things like that, it's just ruined the enthusiasm for not just me, loads of other people as well. And it just sucks because you just want to get out and actually take some cool shots. I've been very lucky on some of the photo shoots I've done, where the sun came out with some really moody skies and and stuff like that and you know i'm not going to forget that but most of the time it's been horrendous luckily i've got the studio so i can go and do stuff in there if need be but i'd rather be on location somewhere doing something cool so you know yeah big big eye opener really in the last year um please comment below is if you've got any plans for next year have you got any um new camera stuff you've thought about buying or you want to buy or um if you need any help with anything like um sony stuff uh, give us a shout uh yeah, it's yeah, a bit of an eye-opener, really. But anyway, I hope everyone has a very happy new year. And um, here's to 2024, which is quite worrying when I can think back to the 90s and a lot of us, a lot of else, I can't speak, a lot of others, we can think back to the, um, the 90s as well. And yeah, things have changed a lot since then, haven't they? So yeah, Tommy, come here. Thomas. No, he's not playing ball tonight. He's sitting over to the side there. Um, Oi, Tommy. Come here. Come on. Come on, say hello. No, he's not playing ball. Anyway, um, like I say, please have a have a good, happy new year. And um, if you're celebrating, I'm not doing anything. I'm literally just going to watch TV. So uh, I'm, yeah, not going to do much. Uh, but yeah, I just want to get out with the camera. Um, and uh, just get some nice new images to have a little play with and hopefully uh, experiment a bit more with um, some ideas and things like that. So, yeah, anyway, please uh, click that subscribe button, little notification bell as well. Um, if you have um, the need for a new hoodie or anything like that, I've got some T-shirts and hoodies for sale on my merch link, which is in the description and on the about bit on the channel as well. Uh, I keep the prices as sensible as I can, so I earn a couple of quid per per sale. So I don't know loads from it, but I just thought that it's actually in the reality cheaper for me to buy one myself um, than it is to go to a clothing store now. So I basically did them for myself, and I thought, well, if anybody else wants one, go for it. So obviously I earn a little bit of profit uh, on there as well. But 
there we go. Um, like I say, please get the subscribe button, little notification bell as well, and hopefully Tommy will be in the next one. And uh, yeah, we'll do some uh, other stuff as well in the, in the near future. So take care. Cheers. Bye.